Okay, guys, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit about this nonsense, which is exactly what it is, what, what it is, hogwash, that the president came out with not too long ago, brought a bunch of children up on the stage, I forget how many, and said that if it saves just one child, shouldn't we ban these, quote, assault rifles? And my answer to that is no, and I'm going to tell you why. And this is, this is basically most of this stuff is what I'd say to the president. I'm sure I would think this subject out more thoroughly before I spoke to him. But most of what I'm going to say is, would be the bulk of my factual statement to that to uh, prove just how wrong he is. Okay, now I looked up some statistics on the computer, and I couldn't find statistics for every year, okay? So we're going to go with 1997. This wasn't the largest number I found. I didn't handpick this number. This is just statistics that I was able to quickly get offline. In 1997, 742 children died in swimming pools. I'm serious. 742 children died in swimming pools in the year of 1997. Now, like I said, this is not a cherry-picked statistic. I didn't go through years and find the highest one. That's just the first year readily available that I found online. That means that in 1997, more kids were killed than all of the school shootings the theater shooting, and any mass school shooting you can think of in your memory, going back 20 years, more kids were killed in one year in swimming pools. So if we're really just about saving children, and that's what the goal is, not to just, you know, handpick things to restrict items, wouldn't you start with looking at how we could design swimming pools or have limitations on swimming pools or maybe even outright ban them. Hey, if it saves one child, it's worth it, right? So what if it saves 742 children a year? Wouldn't it be worth it to ban that, to ban swimming pools? There will never be a discussion on that because our president is anti-gun. He's a socialist. He's always been anti-gun. He's from one of the most anti-gun states, if not the most, in America. So what he does is he uses this argument about saving one child to push what he already wants. Why did he bring some children up on stage? I'll tell you exactly why. Because it creates an impact on the sheep out there. And the sheep so readily take to this type of thing. You bring some little kids up and to push your point. And uh, try to play on people's emotions. And it's simply for the cause. It's not about saving one child. It's not about saving a hundred children. It's simply for the cause of restricting law-abiding citizens of our constitutional right to keep and bear arms which is exactly what that president is for. Restriction for citizens. He's always been anti-gun. He will always be anti-gun. The only reason he had to relax on that issue somewhat before the uh, voting process when he was running for president is because he knew that that would hinder his chances of becoming president. Now, how many children get killed a year because a person that was driving a different vehicle was drunk and wrecked into the vehicle with the child and that child was there was then killed in that accident look look up that statistic i don't have the numbers for you so why doesn't he put a bottle of jack daniels up there on the podium and bring up three children, three or four children, and say, hold up the bottle of Jack Daniels and say, 
if it saves just one child, why don't we ban this elixir? It's never going to happen. How many children are killed in regular automobile accident crashes where there was an alcohol involved per year? He would never say, let's talk about car restrictions and banning cars because he knows that's impossible because you have to drive a car to get from place to place, right? To live, to work, uh, to do things, you have to have a car, right? Well, how much more of a right is it for me to have to have my gun? Because it's in the Constitution. Neither swimming pools nor cars were ever one time mentioned in any article, statement, bill, or any part of the Constitution. So what that means is you could so much more easily ban alcohol, cars, swimming pools than you could a firearm that is in the document that our country is founded upon. So if it saves just one child, tear. Now don't get me wrong, uh, I have nothing but sympathy for anyone that had a child that was killed. I am saying that in the way that he is bringing it to the public. A sympathy plea to restrict law-abiding gun owners. When you ban things, all you're restricting is the people that obey the law. That's it. That's it. Millions of people have an AR-15. Millions. The AR-15 is used as one of the least amount of things used in a crime. You want to know what the most amount uh, or what the most highest percentage of firearms that's used in a crime? It's Little Davis, 25 autos. Little Charter Arms, 38 specials. Little Raven, 380s, 25s. That is what the bulk of armed robberies and uh, crimes that involve a, a firearm involve is those type of weapons. Guns that are around 100, 200 bucks. AKs and so-called assault rifles, which they are not, is the least amount of firearms used in crimes. So even if we wanted to be logical and say, well, let's ban things that will impact crime, you would want to start at like the Bursa 380. You would want to start at the high point, 9mm. That's where you'd want to start. You wouldn't start at an AR-15, the thing most unlikely to be encountered in a crime. Why would you start at the thing that's most unlikely to be un encountered? Why wouldn't you start where the numbers really mean something? So his whole argument is nonsense. He don't like the looks of the AR-15 along with all the an other anti-gunners and Diane Feinstein, woo! I'm gonna do a rant on her pretty soon, guys. So you might wanna stay tuned and subscribe to me to see that one. But I'll do a rant on Diane Feinstein, but not in this video. Only thing he wants to do is follow through with his agenda and his goal I believe it was a goal of his to change all the firearms laws in this country when he became president. We are fighting tooth and nail at every corner and every turn to stop this from happening. And so far it has been a complete success thanks to the NRA. Even if you're not fond of the NRA, and I'm not saying that I think that it's uh, that there's no fault with the NRA in some certain things, because there is, as with anything. If it was not for the NRA, the president wouldn't even have to worry about banning AR-15 rifles and magazines and trying to do all that because they would already have been banned years ago. The NRA is what has kept us. I believe that 100%. Uh, so, if it is really, truly about saving children, Why not start where the highest numbers of child deaths are and work your way down? Why would you start in an AR-15? Why not start in the swimming pools? If we're just simply saving children. Now the president's children go to school with armed guards that have more training than probably anybody you've ever witnessed on YouTube. Why not for the rest of the nation? 
why are schools a gun-free zone? How's that working out for you? President, how's that working out for you? Gun-free zones equals free killing spree. That's all. If you would allow those teachers who get training and want to carry a firearm concealed and have that firearm concealed, they should have the right to do so whenever they want. Uh, just like they would out in public. People say, oh, would you really want a teacher with all those children carrying concealed? Would you trust that in school? Well, let me tell you something. There is thousands and hundreds of thousands of people nationwide concealed carrying every day around you. Restaurants, malls, buildings, on the public sidewalk around you and your kids. What makes the difference? What makes the difference? If you have a teacher carrying in a school, that teacher could put all those kids in one big room and stand at the door with a handgun and be the barrier, the protection for those children. Now, you want to talk about if it saves just one child? How about arming a school teacher? Think that could save a child? Huh. Hmm. Yeah, I think it could. But they will never think that way because their ultimate goal is to restrict guns. So actually what they're doing is instead of saving one child, they are killing more children. Because in these school systems, if there was an armed teacher, if they would allow that, that could, high probability, have saved children. So by further restricting guns to law-abiding citizens, you are actually killing more children. You get my point? You get my drift? So that's some of my thoughts, guys, on these school shootings. And as you see, I freehanded. I don't have no paperwork in front of me, so I normally always forget things that I wish I remembered to speak about later. So please uh, disregard that fact. But um, it's what it comes down to. If you really want to save children, let's look at the raw numbers and not want to ban millions of law-abiding citizens in the United States of owning an AR-15 that's used in 1% of the crime in this country. Ignorant. How can they be so dumb, but yet get into the highest offices in the land? I'll never understand. Oh, and by the way, here's a bonus for you. This is free. <laughs> AR does not mean assault rifle. It stands for one word, Armalite. I got a video about that. Armalite. 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 Drill this into them. It stands for one word, Armalite. It has never meant assault rifle. It has never stood for the words assault rifle. An assault rifle is a fully automatic rifle. Any rifle that is fully automatic, no matter the design, no matter if it has a hunting wood stock on it, is an assault rifle. The AR-15s that civilians own out here in the United States are not an assault rifle. They are an Armalite. Love and peace, and I bid you a good day.